Okay. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah. Okay. We're on. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Thanks again for uh, joining us on this month, July letting seminar in preparation for next week's uh, letting. Uh, before I get started, I wanted to publicly thank uh, uh, Ms. Christine Lewis for the organization and setting the knees up and organizing and getting everybody registered, uh, as well as Ms. Undoxon. So I think y'all have done an excellent job organizing these uh, and we're refining it each month and getting better and better. So. Thanks again, everybody. Again, we won't try to hold you long, but we would like to share some information that hopefully will help you uh, as you start uh, for this month's letting. So uh, we'll keep, keep it moving. Uh, as we go through, we will, uh, again, start um, with introductions uh, for resources that are available uh, to you from a uh, DBE and or prime contractors. So for DBEs, if you're, if you're looking for information on how to bid, uh, what's available to bid, those relationships, uh, you can get that based off of who's on the line. And for prime contractors who may be looking for specific bids, uh, we are a resource, we being uh, our dot DBE supported services to help you find those uh, opportunities there to get the DBEs to bidding. So as we go through today, uh, we will uh, introduce first the uh, Mentor Protege Program. I'm Dr. Ghostin, the director of the UAH Mentor Protege Program, uh, and I'll uh, go through quickly and introduce my staff on the line. Also, is Christine Lewis, uh, who works with us uh, from a technical standpoint uh, to help us with our website as well as help DBEs. Uh, with their business development material, whether it be website development uh, or statement of qualification. Ms. Ondoxon is our civil engineer who also works with us uh, to help DBEs uh, relationships with prime contractors as well as increase their business capabilities. And if uh, fourth member of our team, Donald Taylor, is our subject matter expert with small business, uh, also working one-on-one -on -one with DBEs help them improve their capabilities. And uh, um, my assistant director, Dr. Brian Messimer, uh, helps us from a research standpoint, academics to uh, make sure we've got the latest and greatest with respect to developing small businesses. So with that being said, I'll, I'll now uh, let the uh, DBE supported services uh, introduce themselves to their own line. I think I've seen a few come in. We'll start with uh, UWA. Good morning, uh, Donald Mills from University of West Alabama's uh, DBE Supportive Services. Thank you. Good morning, Sherry Stoudemire, the director, UWA DBE. Thank you, UWA. Did I see anybody from A and M? What about, uh, did I see anybody from ENS? Okay, so for, for those you don't know, those are the three supportive services uh, uh, that are in the uh, North, Central, and Southern regions. I believe that's how we got it breaking up. Um, and you can reach out to those for, for resources as well. So we're gonna continue to move through uh, the agenda. Uh, we'll let um, Ms. Undoxon We'll start with the letting information, and then we have uh, some prime contractor input that'll come after that. Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Ronica on Dawson. Um, the project letting list this month was a little bit uh, slim, which it tends to be kind of in the summertime. Um, I have five projects that we're going to talk about. Um, they're uh, all over the state. Uh, we didn't focus on just one area this time. Um, Christine, if you'll go to the next slide. Um, the first project, which is the largest project on this letting, um, is in Coleman County. Um, so I would say with the size of this project, any DBEs from North Alabama to the Birmingham area, uh, might want to look at this project. Um, it has a 7% DBE goal um, with the bracket estimate, that'd be roughly a million dollars in um, DBE goal work. Um, it's adding additional lanes. And like I said, this is in Coleman County. 
the bracket estimate is a little over 14 million to a little over 17. Uh, work types in this project, um, there are quite a few for the traditional work that some of our DBEs do. Uh, there's concrete removal and demolition. Uh, there's also concrete work in this project, sidewalk, curb and gutter, um, hauling trucking, uh, and bituminous scoring. Uh, you'll see the tentative bidders at the bottom. There are several, so um, BBEs, you know, I would just encourage you to, to reach out to any of these. Uh, Chilton Contractors, WS Newell, Good Hope, Newell Road Builders, Wiregrass, Carcel and G, Reed, and Winston Contracting. Most all of those are in that Coleman area. Reed is um, Huntsville, but I think they're all pretty centrally located from north to uh, mid Alabama. Uh, next slide, Christine. Uh, the second project is uh, St. Clair County. Uh, this has a DBE goal of 2%. Uh, it's a, actually a bridge deck repair project. Uh, it's a, on the smaller end, but there is quite a bit of erosion control in this project. Uh, if we have any erosion control DBEs in that area that work in that area, uh, your bidders at the bottom, Scott Bridge, Gibson and Associates, which is a company out of Texas, uh, Bridge Builders of Alabama, and Grout Incorporated. Next slide. Uh, this one is in very South Alabama, uh, Escambia County. There's a 4% DBE goal. Uh, it's also uh, resurfacing and replacement paving. Uh, bracket estimate, 600 to 700,000. Uh, there's guardrail and erosion control on this project. Um, the tentative bidders, Firegrass, Mid-South, H.O. Weaver, and Mobile Asphalt. So Mobile Asphalt and H.O. Weaver, both mobile area companies, and of course, Firegrass and Mid-South work all over the state. So uh, any DBEs in that area, uh, would want to contact them. Next slide. Uh, Autauga County, uh, this has a 3% DBE goal. Uh, it is a smaller project also, $500,000 range. There is uh, some hauling and trucking, erosion control, and there's also uh, bituminous scoring on this project. Um, you'll see the tentative bidders at the bottom. Uh, Chilton, uh, Asphalt Contractors, Mid-South Wiregrass, um, CBNA, McElhaney, and Cornerstone. Next slide. Uh, this project's in North Alabama in Marshall County. Um, this project does not have a DBE goal specified, but this is one of those projects that we sometimes talk about um, for DBEs that are prime contractors, small prime contractors themselves. Um, this is a smaller job that maybe a, a small DBE prime could, could bid on. Uh, but also, you know, if you're in this area and could partner with a larger prime contractor that um, might be interested in this job, that's also a possibility too. Um, this has hauling, um, erosion control. It's not a lot. Um, so if you're in the immediate Gunnersville area, you, you might want to contract, contact uh, one of the bidders, Wiregrass or Whitaker Contracting. And I think that's the last, yes, that is the last slide. That's, um, those are the only projects we had covered. But once again, if you have looked through the letting and um, there is a project that you are particularly interested in bidding on that we didn't cover, please contact us and we will, um, you know, help you uh, look at the work types, um, help you in any way we can. Are there, are there any general questions to, to Ms. Undoxon about the letting information from our participants? Okay, we'll uh, continue to progress. If you have any questions, we'll have another uh, opportunity at the end of the uh, end of the meeting. So let's go to our next slide. Uh, 
pristine. I think now is where we would like to hear from uh, Mr. Caldwell uh, from Dunn Construction. Sorry. <clears throat> I don't have a slide for that. My apologies. Oh, no okay. problem. I, I I'm here. Can y'all hear me okay? Yes, sir. All right. Um, don't have a whole lot to input. Unfortunately, Dunn Construction, there's no jobs in the levy this month that we are bidding on as prime. Um, as she had mentioned earlier, that this is kind of a slim letting, which is typical this time of year. Um, but things we would like to interject in, into the conversation is, is as far as subs providing proposals to us for an LDOT bid. Um, and I'm assuming most of the subs are familiar with how to use the LDOT website to acquire the, the bid items and the bid information. If they're not, that you know, that's a great resource out there um with the project letting information um what we we would request is, is don't just send us a quote on bid day um, we would like as much correspondence with the contractors prior to bid day as as possible you know we want to know what scope of work you're covering um, let us know if there's something you're not you know the last thing we need is to be counting on a, a subcontractor to send us a complete quote on bid day and, and we find out they're they're not bidding one item that, that we think is part of their scope of work. Um, if there's any exceptions to your bid, I know in the past we've had contractors uh, tell us, yeah, well, we're going to bid the job and we find out the day before the bid that they're just including labor and equipment, no materials. So all of a sudden we're scrambling trying to find a material supplier for say take an item like fence or, or, or something of that nature. Um, Last thing we want is a morning of quote. Um, if you send us a quote the morning of the bid, chances are uh, we're not gonna have time to look at it. That's that's kind of our button up time. Uh, actually, we like to have a bid submitted the day before the letting to make sure we, we do have it covered. Um, so really we request proposals be in by the morning, the day before the bid, which would be the, in most cases a Thursday. Um, that's really it. I'm not sure what all y'all look for from us. I'm, I'm open to questions. If anybody's got any questions, I'd, I'd be glad to entertain them. Mr. Caldwell, this is Christine Lewis um, with the Mentor Protege Program. When I when I do the registration, um, the event registration, there's a question which you also answered. What do you hope to gain from this seminar? And one question that, that, is, that comes up repeatedly is about networking and relationship building with primes from DBE contractors. So um, I know that you sort of touched on that, but do you have some advice for our DBEs about some ways that they can better connect with, build relationships with, and network with prime contractors? Um, yeah. Um, I'm as y'all have seen on most of these projects, there's there's a DBE percentage required on all the jobs, and and some of the larger jobs that percentage is really difficult for us to obtain. Um, you know, I, I would make a point to just each month look at the uh, the projects being bid, find the ones you're interested in, and then towards the end of the month, usually the this week or the um, state will send out and that's why i referenced the website the state will send out a list of tentative bidders the contractors that are looking at these projects um, and the state has a list of contact information for these bidders reach out to us um, and let us know you're interested in the project it's also a good resource after the bids have been submitted to find out who you might want to reach out to the following month um, I don't know who just pulled that up, but that's great. It's that first item under regular letting where it says tenant bidders list. If you click on that, it tells you who's bidding every project. I'll let it refresh and, and come up there, but it's got the contractor's name, address, and and it'd be great. You know, that's a great resource to find out who you want to pursue the uh for that letting or 
for future lettings. Um, I don't know if that answered your question. Um, you know, we're, we're always welcome to a phone call after a letting, uh, emails. Uh, like I said, we're always searching for, for good DBE contractors to, to, to use on our projects. Thank you for answering. Thank you. Any, any other questions? Or? We have a lot of DBEs on the line, some of whom um, attend regularly. And if you're attending these seminars regularly, you there must be information that you're looking for that you, you, you now have the opportunity with Mr. Caldwell to you know, speak up and ask something specific. Yeah. Yeah, this is Mark Keith Carroll with Chemic Construction. How you doing? Doing good. That's good, man. Uh, I didn't even check. Are y'all bidding on the Coleman job? We we are not. We we don't have okay. any projects that we're bidding on in the letting this month. Oh, okay, okay. Cause I think I already got your number. I don't know if you remember me or not, but uh, I'll be test. I'll be touching base with y'all on the next uh next job that y'all gonna be bidding. I do concrete work. Okay. So anything um, from the uh, inlets and uh, driveways and sidewalks, all that kind of stuff. And I didn't know if y'all actually uh, sub any of y'all con y'all concrete work out. We sub all of our concrete work out. Okay. Okay. Well, I need to get on. I need to get on that list with you then. <laughs> all right. Um, I don't know if there is there a way for when this. You've got my contact information. If yes, you sir. Can publish, publish it to everybody after this call. Yeah, I can. I think uh, I already. I thought. Okay. Yeah, I can. I can put the information on the letting seminar website, um, and I'll we'll we'll talk about that at the end. But everybody will receive okay. a link to this presentation after we're done later this afternoon. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Christine, this is Kathy Huff with Road Services LLC. I had a question for Mr. Caldwell. Kind yes, of already answered it, but in the old days, I know that um, for the good faith effort, we usually got um, put on a database or whatever where we got a letter when you were bidding requesting quotes from us. I know technology has changed so much that is now just internet or email sufficient or do we still need that slow mail contact with our primes? Uh, to my knowledge, inter internet is, is sufficient now for good faith effort. So you don't need a hard copy of the bid or anything, internets? No, ma'am. We, we, we actually prefer email quotes. Um, okay. That way yeah. we're not running, running around the day before the bid trying to find some, some letter or something on a fax machine. Okay, and do you keep a database of the DBs that you use or do we just need to go off Aldot's website, bidder's list? I, we have a list of, of DBE and uh, non-DBE contractors that we use, but we do not solicit uh, bids for state projects. We expect the DBE and non-DBE contractors to be familiar enough with the Aldot website to be able to go in there and determine what projects they want to pursue. Okay. That's good information in that we're trying to promote that they get familiar with this website and that gives them or us a purpose of why we're promoting that. So yes, that's good information. This website is probably the most valuable information for any contractor that wants to do how dot work. 
uh, whether they be a prime, a sub, DBE, or a non-DBE. That, that's why I kind of brought it to the to attention that there's there's tons of information there. If, if you could go back one page on the uh, website. Christine, can you go back one page? If you click on our, every month, the first thing that comes up is that the state publishes is the project letting list, which is right up under the tentative bidders list. Where you pick tentative, pick project letting list. All right, this comes out every month and I think she had the front page pulled up at the start of the meeting. This is a list of all the projects to be bid. If you click on, let's say come down to the first one uh, for Coleman County where it says view items. All right, if you click on view items there, mm -hmm. it's gonna list every single bid item or pay item that's going to be on this project. This is an excellent resource for you to go to and determine, hey, uh, the gentleman was talking to me about concrete work. He can go to this list of bid items and, and see that there, there is or, or may not be any work on this project for him to bid. Once, once he establishes that, you know, once the tentative bidders list comes out, he can reach out to them and say, hey, we want to quote this project. We want to quote pay items. In his case, he would want to quote pay items 430B, 034, 450B, 000, 502A, 000, and the 524B, 010, which is all the concrete items on that project. Um, so, I mean, that, that's, that's my push behind this website is, is it's got all the information you could possibly need to bid projects and reach out to contractors. But that leads me to another question. When you get a quote, say for his concrete items, and so many people aren't aware where you go and actually look at the plans or the uh, change it orders. Okay. Do you contact your DB subs or any subs with the change information or do they need to be looking at that their self to make sure they know what they're bidding. Right, it's under letting files. Uh, we do not um, reach out to every single contractor and tell them there's been a change. Uh, we somewhat expect if you're gonna do DOT work, you, you've got to understand um, how the website works and where the information is published. We just bid so many projects it would be a daunting task for us to contract, contact every contractor, every letting, and say, hey, there's been a change. Oops. So it's important for us to know where this is and keep on yes, top of it. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much. I mean, I, I actually, as, as a prime, I check this website every single morning for any change to the projects I'm looking at. Good, thank you. Thank you. Christine, this is Donald Taylor. I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Um, so when you guys receive bids from a DBE you haven't worked with before versus bids with DBEs that you have worked with before, how do you evaluate that DBE other than on, on price and then other than on price? All right. Naturally, the first thing we're going to look at is price um, because that's what our contractors are going to look at. If, if a DBE comes, let's say if it's a DBE I've never worked with before and he comes in lower than a DBE I have worked with before, um, naturally I've got to assume that my competition is going to use that lower price also. But I'm almost always going to pick up the phone and call that DBE contractor and have a conversation with him about the project before I, I just plug his number in. You know, there has to be a comfort level with, with, with us. Number one, the DBE has the scope covered and that he can perform the work. Um, yeah, it's not always just price. You know, I've reached out to some, some contractors before and that they didn't have the scope covered. Uh, I give them opportunity to cover the scope and sometimes they're not interested in covering the scope. So does, it, does that answer your question, Donald? Yes, and so 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 um, 
it's very important for the DBE then to uh, make sure that when they send in their quote, of course, it's a, re a reasonable quote, but also to make sure you have a good understanding of everything that's in this scope. Because when you give that call to them, they're going to have to understand just because your price is low does not mean that you guys are going to use them just because their price is low. So that in is, other words, you must make sure that everything is in there and they have all their costs associated in there as well. That is correct. Greg Mars has a question. And, and, and another question, and we do this with, with DBE and non-DBE contractors that we use on, on bid day is if, if the dollar amounts over a certain limit that we have internally and, and you're low, we may call and ask you for your bond information. Um, it, it was really helpful for us if, if your bond information is included on your proposal, if it's 1%, 2%, 2.5%, saves us a little time there. Mr. Caldwell, uh, this is Christine again. Um, I've got a question that came through chat. Um, and the question is, what is the process to bid temporary markings for a project? <laughs> We're talking about striping temporary markings, I'm assuming. Oh, okay. Um, I didn't know what that meant, uh, but yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, well, I guess the first qualifications you'd have to get an approved contractor with DOT with IDOT and the, the second thing is, is be able to perform the work and provide a proposal um, outside of that I don't know of any you know qualifications uh, you, know, you just got to be able to perform the work right I don't know if that answered the question um yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll Christine, chat. Christine, I think I'll answer that question when we get to that part. Pardon me? I said I'll answer that question when I get to my part. Okay. Hey, um, this is Monica again. While Christine is on this page, I just wanted to go um, the DBEs in another location. Um, if you'll, Christine, go to helpful links under that general information. Okay. And then about 10 items down, it says list of pre-qualified contractors. Okay, right here. Right there. And as Mr. Caldwell um, was talking about, this is a list of all of the major primes that are pre-qualified that bid with ALDOT. Um, so it does have their address. Uh, it does not have email, but it does have phone numbers. Um, you know, and I'm sure those are general phone numbers that they could put you in touch with um, their estimating departments for all of these contractors. And I have a little tutorial if there's a DBE on the line. Um, I have a little tutorial I've done to get to all of these links uh, to make it easier because like this one of the pre-qualified prime contractors, if you don't know exactly kind of where to go, it's a little bit cumbersome to find. Um, so I can send that out um, if there's a DBE that needs it. Yeah, and I can also um, put a link to that actually, either on our resources page Am I muted? Oh, that's true. We could, we could yeah, put okay. that on the, it may already be on there. Yeah. I hadn't thought about that. And um, I can also put it on the letting page. The make Yeah, sure. it has a great website um, that has links to a lot of resources. And so this tutorial may be on that page already, but if not, we'll get it on there so that, um, so that people can find it. I'm just gonna. That's all I had. Well, I, I'm going to also just pull up quickly our resources page. So it's a it's a quick place to to find different things, including I d I'm not sure if the tutorial is on there, but I'll, I'll double check and see that it is. But there's this is actually a good segue um, for Dr. Golston. But this is our resources page. We start we have this categorized 
with a bunch of LDOT specific sites and then bidding opportunities. It is on there, Christine. I think that LDOT prime contractors. Okay. That may take you right to that. Right. Okay. Yeah. I think it does actually. Okay. And, and just as an aside, this is also several places on our website. You can find links to register for the upcoming events, including the letting seminars. So, but this is our resources page. And um, Dr. Goldston's going to talk specifically about these items here. Um, but might be getting ahead of myself. Any more questions? I think I've got everybody muted. So let me just, yeah. If you, I think you have the ability to unmute yourself. So if anybody has any questions, uh, go ahead. All right. Yes, my name is Albert Williams with Providence Staffing. Mm -hmm. And I wanna know, does Don Construction work with staffing agencies? And what's the process of getting, being able the subcontract for Don Construction? Uh, we do work with staffing agencies. Uh, that would be handled through our, our, our human resources, our HR department. Um, so you could you could call the 205-510-0252 uh, number and that's going to get you to, to our receptionist that can forward you to HR. Thank you very much. That's 205-510-0252? Yes, sir. Dr. Golston? Yes, I was I was reading the uh, question from uh, I think Mr. Moore. So um, oh. uh, I I think there you would reach out to your supported services first. Uh, so we have developed some resources as a mentor protege program over the years. Uh, we've uh, copied some resources for some of our more successful DBEs. This one we copied uh, from Miss Miss Huff on the process of bidding. Uh, so I think uh, Mr. Caldwell gave a lot of great information. Uh, there, uh, one of the things that we always say is, you know, don't let your first introduction to the prime contractor uh, be your bid, as Mr. Taylor was saying, uh, and Mr. Caldwell, it's very tough for them to know that you're capable of doing the work if all they got is the bid uh, for that. Um, so what we would try to do is, uh, from that standpoint, uh, like Don is not bidding this month, so it'd be a good chance for us to go and, to go and, uh, uh, start building their relationship and getting them resources and references so that they could um, uh, now understand that you're capable of doing the work and check those references. Now when they get the bid, they have some, uh, I guess, information behind that bid to evaluate it. So uh, a good chance now to make those contacts. Because during the, if they were bidding this month, this would be a very busy week for them and definitely next week. So trying to start building those relationships are difficult when they're trying to submit their bids on Friday. So in this letter that we have as a template that we give to the DBEs that come to us as part of that bidding process, uh, we have a lot of the information that Mr. Caldwell has, like bond information, what you're bidding, uh, your, definitely your certification, all those types of things. All that information is very strategically put into the letter, uh, which is on our website. And then if you look on the next uh, page there, the uh, next to it is an Excel uh, page, which is the uh, sub quote. The sub quote is an Excel with those Oops. letting items Sorry. that you're going to be. In. So it should be, should look very similar to the uh, uh, to when uh, Miss Lewis was going to the website and looking at the work types on that particular job. So you just copy those right in. Uh, you put in your unit price. Uh, and then it'll calculate for you automatically the total amount and then sum those for you. And then you can submit this right to the uh, to the prime contractor, preferably, you know, early in the week, uh, maybe Monday or Tuesday, uh, so that they can get that and uh, not be rushed at the last minute. But definitely, uh, you know, we don't want to be submitting that quote to them on Friday morning as we go through. 
through that. On the website as well, uh, for BBs that are just starting this process, uh, they have bid tabs. And, and in that bid tabs, uh, they, they list the price that the prime contractor submit on those work types for previous jobs. Uh, so it's, you know, you don't want to use that as the Bible for your price, but you can use that kind of as a benchmark to say uh, kind of where you are. But each job is different. So, again, but it gets you in the ballpark. That's kind of how we uh, train our uh, DBEs in our mentor protege program. We help them build that bidding process. Uh, we try to standardize that process, and then we try to make it more efficient each time. So each time we're following the same processes. Uh, we're making sure we understand what those prices are, and then we're going from there to make sure that uh, we can refine that process each month. Each month we want to get a little bit better, a little bit better. But in order to do that, we have to have a standardized process in place. So um, first step I would do uh, for the questions that were in the chat is reach out to your supported services. I know UWA is on the line, but a and &M, whatever area you're in, reach out to them. There are estimating resources that they have available just to help you do the estimates. So each supported service in your area has estimating resources. So make sure you t utilize those. And then as you uh, do get a foothold and start to grow your business, uh, there's the business development program, and then there's the mentor protege program, which help refine uh, those efforts as you go forward. So we like to call it our playbook to help the DBEs uh, get work and then perform at that work. Uh, but uh, make sure you reach out to us uh, so that we can provide those services. Uh, I think this seminar has been excellent because, you know, part of the seminar is to help start building those relationships. Uh, so I'd like to thank Mr. Caldwell for being on. Uh, thank you, DBEs, for speaking up and asking those questions. Uh, but definitely, uh, really, the benefit of this uh, seminar is after the call, uh, whatever needs you see stand in the need of, you reach out to those people, whether it be the mentor project program, your supported services, or those prime contractors, and we can help facilitate those relationships based on some of the relationships we built throughout the, uh, our program. So I'll, I'll just uh, stop there and see if there's any general questions uh, for us um, before we continue, and I'll let Mr. Huffman kind of, uh, if he has anything he wants to add. Dr. Golston, I, I just want to point out here that um, the, when, when I send the participants in this seminar, this slideshow, this will be a live link, and they can go directly to our resources page to find these tools. And then from there, you can directly download these tools. So I've, I've tried to make it as easy as possible to get from, from here, slideshow, to here actual tools, so. Okay. And then they can feel free to reach out to us as well. Hey, Christine, can, can I interject something here? This is Greg with Dunn. Yes. Um, and he had pulled up the uh, spreadsheet with the pay items where you input your unit mm -hmm. and extend it out across the quantities. I just want to make sure all the DBE contractors understand that just because the state says there's going to be 74,093 cubic yards of excavation, there's no guarantee that that exact amount of work is going to be done. If the state could have missed their estimate, or they could, it could be 30,000 cubic yards of excavation. Um, so, so just something to be aware of when you're putting your pricing together that that the state's quantities aren't always actual, that those quantities are, are fluid and, and change as the project develops. Um, and also realize that uh, mobilization is a pay item, and, um, and, and be sure to utilize that to help cover your mobilization costs. So if it costs you $5,000 to mobilize to a job, don't put that cost in your pay items. Be sure you put that cost in your mobile, in mobilization. Uh, just a little tidbit of information there. You know, the state quantities aren't always absolute. Thank you. Dr. Golston, can you hear me? 
Yes. Go ahead, Mr. Huffman. Yes. Uh, this is John Huffman from Aldot here in, in Montgomery. Greg brought up an interesting point from Don regarding the time frame for DBEs to submit bids. Greg, if you were bidding this project on July 30th, what in a given time frame would you call or say as being good for you to receive bids from our DBEs? I know you say you would set them up to the day before the bid letting, but ideally, what, what, what would be the time frame that you would really like to get bids from our DBEs? If, if I were bidding, if I had a job in the laying on the 30th, I would love to start getting numbers in that Tuesday. Um, the, the earlier, the better, but I, I do realize that changes happen during the project and, and you know, the subs and the generals need time to, to absorb those changes. But usually the Tuesday and Wednesday is when we start looking for quotes. Unfortunately, we don't start seeing them mostly until after lunch on Thursday. So, so Thursday becomes a scramble. I hope everybody heard your advice about time frame, proper or optimum time frame to receive quote. My next comment is, Dr. Golson brought up a fact that's very true. We have placed in each DBSS provider's budget monies for them to have an estimator on call or at their fingertips to help DBEs, highway construction DBEs assigned to their respective coverage area. If we have DBEs on the line now, whether you reside in the Northern tier with Alabama a and Central tier with EEO Networking Solutions, or Southern tier with Mr. Mills and U Universal West Alabama, they, all those folks have someone on their staff that can help a DB in those areas work up a quote for submission if Don was bidding on this project for submission to Don within the optimum time range. And it, it is at no cost to the DBE. I want the DBEs to use the services that ALDOT has put out there in form of supportive services that's available to them use them. That's why we're going to go through in the coming months meticulous work with making sure that our DBs know what this ALDOT bid letting and its website for highway construction is all about. Okay, Mr. Hobson, Greg Mars, uh, have a question. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, and I appreciate that information you just shared with us as a DBE, because my question was going to be, okay, with the letting, okay, I'm getting those, and I'm new in the process. So, what's the time? What's the time frame if I go under the letting and see something I want to bid on? Is the what's the time frame between that one for me to actually start bidding on that, make contact with the with the prime to try to submit a bid to that? What what timeline I got on that? You know, when that come out. Well, I think he just answered your question, but I'll try to phrase it for you. I'll try to give it to you in a, in, in a timeline sequence. Okay. For okay. example, if we've got this letting for this month, it's going to be on July 30th. Ms. Okay. Undoxon just wrote, went over for all the bids for DBE goals that she kind of went over from an outline standpoint. If you go to that view items and you see something within that area that falls within your firm's work type. Mm -hmm that you can perform and depending on where you are assigned in this state you you reside in this state you can contact your dbss provider and they can have someone on their staff who's on call to help you work up the quote based on the quantities of items that you saw that you said you that you know that you can perform for this project you could then look at what you would call the interested bidders that Ms. undoxon explained that's all the that's all the primes who've shown an interest in that particular project. And as Mr. Greg stated, the primes are expecting you to give them a call and say, hey, I'm so-and-so DBE. I can do work for you on this project. I'm going to submit you your su submit you my quote. 
So if it's, if it, if this project is going to be in the bid letting on on the 30th, and you can get this information, I think at least from a timeline sequence, I'm looking at the month of July, you can have it from us at least by the 13th. Okay. Okay. So you have from the 13th, and you remember Greg said he does not want anything actually on the 31st. But unfortunately, he gets things in the afternoon after the 30th. So for my timeline that I just kind of laid out for you, you have from the 13th, so to speak, up until the 29th to get your quotes into him. And as Ms. Undoxon stated, be mindful of change orders which might occur, which might affect the quantity or the amount of work that you're going to do within your quote to him. So as Donald Taylor stated, you when you submit your quote in, your quote must encompass all known changes which may affect the quantity of work that you might submit into done if they were bidding this if they were bidding this month as your quote to do work on them for that for, for that a particular project. I tried to lay it out for you from a timeline sequence and hitting conversation which is already which had already occurred to kind of bring it to life to you in terms of what was said this morning. Okay, well I appreciate that because like I said, we're just trying to understand the process better. And like I understand said, doing this area and, and you know, I'm just trying to understand it. That's all. But you asked, but you asked the question though, which I think has probably been a barrier or a hindrance probably for years to DBs in our in our state, not really having an in depth grasp of all the relevant information that resides on our website, which can really help them get quality bids to the interested bidders for various projects within upcoming lettings. And I agree with you 100%. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Huffman, I'd just like to to kind of talk about something. Um, if the DBE is working in a certain area, um, you know, whether it's concrete, paving, erosion control, and they they pick up other work types that they're doing, if they're, you know, in concrete and then they start doing paving or or vice versa you need to understand you've got to go back to aldot and get certified in that work type before a prime contractor is allowed to count you as a dbe on their project because you can tell a contractor that you're a dbe but if you're not certified in that work type they may not get credit for it so everybody just needs to understand as you grow as a business and start doing more work, you will need to go back to ALDOT and get certified in those additional work types. Greg Morris, again, that brings an interesting question to me, which I wanted to verify with my firm. Uh, how many different, we say, work entities can you have and be certified? Under under our data DBE program, that's what I'm trying to understand. Mr. Huffman, I'll let you take that one. Yes, uh, yes. Can can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. It all depends upon the word a uh, control. How many of those individual work types can you control? with you being the DBE owner. What I mean by control, let's say you start out with erosion control. You have all the necessary for workforce, equipment, experience, skill sets, et cetera, to control that work type. So therefore, when you initially certified by LDOT as a DBE, you're granted that work type or that initial work type area in your uh, certification. Let's say you out there working projects and you see that uh, guardrail installation is a viable work type that you might want to get off into to further expand the business services of your firm. You then must apply to LDOT or send me a letter saying that Huffman, I would like to add uh, additions or installation of guardrail to my work type. 
to my current work type. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to look to see did you have any prior experience in Garber installation. As Ms. Undoxon say, although it may look lucrative to you, you just can't say I'm going to get off into guardrail to, to provide an answer to your question. You must previously have shown that you have experience in that area so that when you add it as, a, as an additional work type and you request to add it as additional work type and then folks on the staff query you about your prior experience in that area and you prove that you have experience in that area and then you are granted by the committee a new certification in that area, and then it is added to your work type, LDOT will check that before saying that you're okay to work on that project for that prime, and then the prime then can get experience for using you or get credit for using you. So that's the process. You must already uh, previously show that you have done work in that area and that you have experience and know what you're doing. Because one, the first thing that's going to be a bugaboo, so to speak, if problems occur on the project, they're going to quit, they're going to check the DB file to see what the firm is authorized to perform work in. Okay. Um, we have Dr. Golston back on the line. If we do, hey, this is this is Greg with Dunn again, and I'm sorry to keep interjecting things here, but no, we but, we we want your feedback. You're good. But he Please made do. he made a great point uh, about your DBE certification, uh, which brought me back to when you send your proposals into us. There's a lot of important information we need on that proposal. And if you're ALDOT DBE certified, it's great for you to put that DBE certification number on your proposal. That way, there's no question for us that you're certified. Uh, on your proposal, be sure you put an email address we can reach out to, a contact that we can reach on that Thursday at five o'clock and we're trying to, to go through all these subcontractors and determine who we want to go with. Uh, there's been a lot of times when, when I've pulled up a DBE contractor's quote and all it's got on it is the name of the company and their price. And it's been faxed to me. And I have no way of reaching out to them. So your company name, your DBE certification number, a contact number and a contact person that can be reached on that day before the bid. Um, that's really important to us. That's, that's sometimes as, as important as the price is somebody we can talk to, um, which, which leads me back to having a conversation with us prior to the bid day is important. But, but that information is really, really important for us to have on the bid. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Golston, are you on? Oh, okay. I just got a text. Hang on just a second. Unmute. Okay, try now. You're unmuted. Okay. Donald? Okay, Donald. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. First, um, I want to thank Mr. Greg Caldwell for um, for your and Don Construction um, for a lot for setting this up with us. And Mr. Huffman, your your, your participation is always greatly appreciated. Um, UWA and other departments of DB supported services. One of the things I want to make. Donald, you're you're breaking up. Hmm. Now, now you guys to really use those resources, the things that we're doing today. One example, you got a direct number to 
the staffing guy got a direct number to the HR person at Don Construction to go ahead and provide, try to provide some of those services to Don, right? These resources are there for you to utilize. Please do so. Um, again, all of the things that we do, we, we try to make sure that we get it out there to the other DBEs as well. So anything that we do, guys, you guys can reach out to Christine, out to Ghostland, or Ronica, or I, and get that information to help you with your business. Again, the main point is that LDI has spent a lot of money and a lot of resources out there to make sure they have programs out there for their DBEs to be successful. Guys, please use those services and those programs. Um, we're at uh, 12 o'clock right now around, um, I mean, 11 o'clock right now. So uh, if there's any other questions or questions that did not get answered, please email them to Christine or Dr. Ghost or myself or Ronica, and we will get those questions, those answers back to you guys. Um, with that note, Mr. Huffman, do you have anything else you want to add before we close out today? Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. One, I would like to echo that statement that Mr. Taylor just made about using the services and things that we have out on this place within our supportive service providers around the state for usage by our DBE clients. I call them clients because they are our folks that we are trying to help. And we're trying to make sure that they are successful as small business owners. And since we deal in highway construction, they know very well and are versed on the LDOT websites, and they know intimately what the composition of a bid letting is. That's how LDOT chooses to do business with its highway construction prime contractors, DBE and non-DBE subs, folks. It's not going to change. We have to get in the mode or the mindset are using the medium that LDOT chooses to do business in. So let's get on board. Let's use these services that we have placed out there for you, free of charge, so that you can so that you can submit more bids each bid letting month to the individual and interested bidders on the bidding list. Thank you very much. And I just want to uh, we're on this page here about contact. When you all receive this slideshow in PDF format, you can just click on these. These are all live links. So all you have to do is click on the um, person you want. This coverage map shows which by county who your DBE supportive services is. Um, and then you, you can just simply from this document, click on sites and email addresses. Same with the, uh, you know, this is our website, a link to our website. You can get to it right from this page. Um, if you are in the north or the south region and you need estimating support, um, this, is, this is your person. And then in the central region, it's um, ENS. So we, when we do these seminars, we try to make everything as accessible and as easy as possible. And this is one way that, you know, that you can get easy access to this information. And I think we're, we're ready to close. If you would like to register for next okay, um, seminar, um, again, there's a live link right here. It'll take you right to the registration page. That's all I have, Donald. Do you have something? Yes, um, guys, you know, with COVID-19 um, still an issue here in the state of Alabama in our country, please make sure everybody continue to wash their hands, practice, you know, social distancing and wear your mask and things of that nature. Um, let's, let's make sure that um, we keep all employees and families safe. If no one else has any more questions, this will be the end of our of this, this, this um, seminar. And if you want to register for the next week's seminar, go ahead and start that process now, okay? Thank you. That'll be all, Christine. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you.